This is becoming embarrassing for the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks lost 7-4 to the Jets today, and even though it was another messy game defensively for Vancouver, I want to talk about this moment right here with Elias Pettersson. This is the Canucks season summarized, and it's gone to the point where it's borderline embarrassing. On the same night that the future number one overall pick and hometown boy Connor Bedard got six points in his first game back in the WHL since the World Juniors, the Canucks season seems like a slow moving car crash. Body language often tells you a lot about what's going on with the confidence and mood of a team and all year long it's been a lot of this. From the coach all the way to the players, this season has looked and felt like a chore that none of them want to deal with. This isn't new for the Canucks team because it has now become accepted by their coaching staff and the leaders in that room. JT Miller is a perfect example. As one of their main drivers on offense and the assistant captain, his leadership this year has been questionable at times to say the least. Slapping his stick at teammates, openly having arguments on the ice, and just overall terrible body language. This type of behavior has now become acceptable in that dressing room. When things don't go your way, it's okay to slam your stick on the Canucks, and it's okay to make your teammates look bad. That standard has now been set. To be clear, I don't blame this on the players because the emotion and care is being shown. This type of energy and passion directed in the right manner is honestly the underlying basis for how a lot of Stanley Cup teams are built. The Canucks in every aspect of their organization lack vision. Last season, they signed JT Miller to a contract extension, and now because of that same contract, they can't afford their captain, Bo Harvat, and will probably have to move him by the deadline. The entire coaching staff and players know this, and as a result, you have a team who's got no clue what their identity is and objective throughout the season. These players show their frustration because they care and that in itself is a good thing. But if not handled correctly in the room and amongst coaching staff, that can and has become poisonous. Even from the very start of the season where Bruce Brudrell thought his team looked mentally weak after blowing a couple of leads, the Canucks season seemed doomed. So now that leads to the question that all of us and even the Canucks themselves are probably asking on a daily basis. What's next for the Vancouver Canucks? Do they tank for Bedard or do they continue to try and find their game and maybe squeak into a wild card spot? As a competitor, you always go for the second option, but when the locker room and confidence of this team is this shaky, it still seems pointless to do anything else but to tank for Connor Bedard. So let me know in the comments down below what you think is the best option for the Canucks moving forward and what all your thoughts are on all the different incidents that has happened throughout this season. We talked a lot about the mental side of the game today, but if you want to work on the physical side, check out hockey training. Hockey training helps players improve their explosive speed, agility, conditioning, and skills on the ice through science-backed training methods. They work with players of all ages and skill levels to help them take their game to the next level. They also have a fantastic YouTube channel with tons of free videos, so if you're interested, I'll leave those links down in the bio. If you like this video and want to see more just like it, click on any of the videos right here.